There isn't a whole lot of maintenance that's required with paints, but let's just talk about a few things that may happen. Paint is pigment and medium. Okay, great, doesn't matter whatever the combination is. If you let them just sit for a while, a tendency to take place will happen is that the medium and the pigment will separate. And generally this medium is like this kind of milky white consistency like thing. That's not good obviously for our paints. We want our paints to be fully mixed together so that they are the most working condition for us to be utilized when we're actually painting. A lot of the time, just before we actually pick a color to be using, we should give the paint a good shake. Ah. This particular paint happens to have an agitated ball in it, which makes it more conducive for shaking. If you've ever used a wet palette and you've closed the lid on your wet palette and then you've, the next following day or something like that, you've opened it back up, the paint that you've got actually has whiteness that you see on a particular color, like say red or something like that. And you're like, where did this white come from? That white stuff is actually the medium rather than the pigment. And so when we see that happen, we actually have to mix it back together to get them to be whole again. So for that, every time that we're using paint, before we bring it and put it into our wet palette, we should always give it a good shake. Now, you might go out there and think, well, I don't want to give my paint a shake. And then so you could go out there and buy like a the like paint mixers. I've heard something called the Vortex Mixer, which you just literally put the, the paint onto it and it like, it like really vibrates it really hard, which this sounds pretty cool, but you really don't need to spend that money at all. You just need to give it a shake. And that's really straightforward, really simple. For people who out there who have Citadel paints or um, Games Workshop stuff, you've got these bottles, these bottle caps, things like that. And it's very common for them to be not fully closed when you think you've got it closed. That's happened to me a few times and you know, it's just life, right? And so sometimes you need to reinvigorate them, but shaking it's not gonna happen because you can see that it's like congealed and hardened in places and it's almost like you've ruined your paint. And that really sucks because obviously acrylic paint will dry and you know, we don't want it to happen when it's in the bottle. So what we can do is we can take a drop of acrylic retarder or a drop of acrylic thinner, probably thinner actually, I think both will absolutely work, but you must be a bit careful with both of them. So start small and work your way up rather than by putting a bunch in. Obviously you can see how much damage has been done to the drying amount. And then so you might be able to take a guess about if you need to add more or less, but really you want to be building up to it rather than just straight guessing into it. A few little drops into the mix, take a stick or back end of a paintbrush. You don't really want to be using bristles for this because you'll just wreck it and stir it until you kind of get back to a regular consistency of your paint. And that's a great way just to give life back to your paint if something's actually happened. But yeah, make sure that you close your paints after you've used them. I don't even know if this actually falls into maintenance. Do you like using metallic paint? And I think a lot of us do, and I do too from time to time. I tend not to because I think practicing non-metallic metal is a really worthwhile thing practicing, so I tend to do that. But metallic paint definitely has a place. If you take metallic paint and you put it on your wet palette and you utilize it and you take your paintbrush and you clean it off into water, you will literally create like a glitter bomb of water. So it's the particles of metal that exist in your paint that are coming out into the water. If you take that with your other colors, you are very likely adding metallic shine into your other paints. Now, that may be an interesting effect. It may even be so subtle that it's actually unimportant, but if you really care about utilizing specific colors and having specific effects that is something to be aware of. At least with me, I will always bring a second glass of water out if I'm gonna be using metal paints. And that's the place that I put the metallic paint in rather than mixing those paints up. So it's just something that is worth keeping in mind, having an idea about separation. You might realize it has no bearing on you. And then I would say, don't worry about it. But I have found or have looked that I really don't want to be blending the two together. Obviously, one of the big tools that a lot of miniature painters use is the airbrush. Now, I'm going to cover that at a later date. It's a bit more of an advanced tool. Not everyone who's starting out has an airbrush or wants to buy an airbrush. So I'm just gonna leave this one out, but I promise you that I will cover it in a future video, going through all the issues and cool things that 
belong or exist with an airbrush. Let's just talk about model maintenance. Now, models don't need maintenance, do they really? It's not like they're hanging out, you know, having a good time without you. Actually, it's really down to us that kind of perhaps damage our own models, but that's cool, that's the point where we've put the time and we're playing with them for the most part, and so we could cause damages to them. Model maintenance or the idea of just making sure the hard work that you've put into your models stays that way. We just wanna make sure that the miniatures retain the good shape that they are in. A lot of us like to display our armies, our miniatures, our display pieces, and all of that stuff is wonderful and great, and you should, and be proud of it. But sunlight is gonna be bad for that. Sunlight will effectively bleach anything over a period of time, and I'm sure that you are well aware that, that is true. So miniatures in direct sunlight, especially over constant and consistent exposure, will damage or change the color of the paint that has happened by bleaching it effectively. So if you have a display case that has your miniatures, I would say try to make sure that it avoids direct sunlight at all cost. That would be my first thing. And then really my second piece to that is if you are a person who is playing games with your miniatures, acrylic paint is tough, but consistent wear and tear will absolutely remove it. And so one thing for the more army players or the people who are using their miniatures for gaming, it is really worth your time and effort, especially if, you know for all the effort and work that you've put in for painting it, that you should protect them with a varnish. The varnish is A, just an additional coat of paint that you can't see, which will help protect your models from when you're picking it up, especially when you're picking up multiple miniatures at the same time and moving them over. You know, you are causing that friction to take places, which is likely to cause paint chips, which is what we want to avoid, because then you have to go back with a paintbrush at some point later. We would like to avoid it. So getting a varnish can be a super great way of just protecting your miniatures for a long period of time. Then the question comes down to, well, what kind of varnishes should I get? Well, firstly, if you don't have an airbrush, then you would need to get an aerosol can. And I would recommend buying a either an ultra matte or a matte varnish. There is obviously glossy, satin, uh, satin, and probably a mixture of other things of that note. You know what they do, glossy versus matte, it tends to be that matte and or very matte is nicer to the eye. And if it's glossy, well, then it will catch the glint of light and it will be really bright in places depending on where the light is. And so I think that's preferably something to avoid. Now, I know that if you don't have an airbrush, this is not going to be very helpful. I do not recommend trying to hand paint varnish on anything. So just if you've got varnish of any kind, don't try and hand paint it. It'd be very difficult to make it even. So if you've got an airbrush, then recommending something along the lines of this AK Interactive matte and ultra matte stuff is really nice. It's very straightforward. You just put a few drops of it. You can put a little thinner if you need to, and then you can spray it on your models. And then yes, you've got a varnish. This is really where having an airbrush can come in handy because varnishing is so much easier with an airbrush than trying to do it with an aerosol can, at least in my opinion. But you don't, you absolutely do not need to get an airbrush in order to do it. And especially if you're starting out and you just don't know, you can absolutely do it from an aerosol can. You just need access to an outdoor space to do it. And it works exactly like priming. Actually, it's fractionally easier than priming in my book. The reason why I say that is you don't even need to fully cover all of the model. And so what I'm saying is, okay, I'm a space marine, right? The places where my hand is going to touch the miniature is going to be all on the outside and probably in the top part of the model. So I don't need to try and shoot in the armpits, for instance, or in the places where my fingers can never ever get to. So you just need to do a quick little spray on more of the top side, like more like a zenithal, and you will have sufficient protection from most things. Though I must say one quick thing, before you shoot an army or anything like that, absolutely test it on a singular model or test it on something first because this matte varnish here has a not, it's not really completely matte. It has a tiny bit of sateen in it, which can work, but it has some, you know? So it's kind of like, though the company will say what it is, 
worth just testing to double check that it is what you want it to be before applying it on your actual models. Because getting off will be an absolute bastard. It is very important to maintain your equipment. It will save you money down the end run, and it's worth getting some of these practices ingrained as quickly as possible. Because once you've got them, then you know where to take care of it. It's really a fairly straightforward system. It's just brush, just paint. It's not rocket science. That's wonderful. We just need to be aware. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed all of that. Um, if you did, please press the like button and subscribe. Uh, subscribing will obviously really help get this video out there and help us crack the YouTube algorithm gods, which are totally all about repressing our innate emotions. <laughs> uh, with that, thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>